this is, in a way, kind of an addendum to my previous video, Feminism Revisited. Thinking about the ideas I went over in that video, considering viewpoints of typical factions and extrapolating all of this, as well as applying any intersecting philosophical comments, has led me to what follows. I think this will be a very thought-provoking and different point of view for most of you. First, we start with the big issue that holds everything back. It stops all rational thought and puts any sort of wisdom or enlightenment forever out of grasp. I'm talking about us versus them thinking, or groupthink. Far too many ideas get hopelessly snarled by being framed in this way. Now, keep in mind I am, again, ignoring the hopelessly stupid who are far too mired in misandry and misogyny to have anything even remotely resembling a rational conversation. That's where the bulk of the group think is, but it's something that anyone can slip into if one isn't careful. Us versus them is the creation of in-group and out-group and the differentiation with distancing language and generalization. This leads to dehumanizing and demonizing the outgroup. I made a video on this a couple years ago, if you want more information. It has been in other videos as well, like my two-part series on propaganda. It is the people who tend to identify as MRAs who usually I see stuck in this mode of thinking. Some can even see there is some sort of systemic bias out there, but that's as far as they can get with it. All they can see is their demonized enemy, and this hyper-focus prevents them from seeing anything else. By dropping this paradigm of groupthink, and this false idea of the demon them, they will be able to gain a better perspective, one where they can think about what this bias is, and where it comes from. I have some ideas about that, but demon them is dismissed out of hand unless they realize there's no demon them. Let me bring up an idea we have all heard. For a man, it is never okay to hit a woman. That means a lot of things. It's saying domestic violence is unacceptable, and that picking on someone smaller and weaker than you makes you a bully. It's framed as man and woman, though. It's taken as a given. Is it really literally that a man shouldn't hit a woman? Or is it other moral principles framed in deep-seated societal gender stereotyping? What this is saying is that a woman is weaker, inferior, and must be protected like a child. The man is stronger and superior, but this infers a predatory quality on him as well. A man and a woman are supposed to be equal, but we feel a man hitting woman is wrong. That's how ingrained it is. The genders involved misses the point, though. What is so very wrong is domestic violence and bullying someone. That's what we have a moral objection to, or at least that's how it should be. But is that what we have a moral objection to? What about a very large, strong woman picking on a little, mousy, submissive man? If she hits him, that doesn't seem as bad as it should, does it? Some people might find it a little humorous. Why should it be different? Domestic violence and bullying is still objectionable, isn't it? Again, we are conditioned with what is woman and what is man. Not only is this trivializing the abuse this fellow is suffering, but it's really a very degrading idea about women. We have this idea of female inferiority that seems almost unshakable. We view incidents like this with no feeling that the woman is doing anything all that bad. At the same time, rather than feel bad that this man is a victim of bullying and domestic violence, we feel more that he should be ridiculed instead. He got beat up by a girl, right? So he gets ridicule, not sympathy. What does this mean we are thinking about women, 
at least subconsciously, were thinking they're weak, inferior, and like a child. And that's a really disgustingly sexist idea of women. But both men and women get stuck thinking like this without realizing it because of the deep-seated nature of the societal values force-fed to us constantly from birth as if they were objective truth. If you get caught in the trap of us versus them, you can't see what the them is dealing with because you don't care they are the enemy, then they also can't see what you are dealing with. You may not even know exactly what the problem is, you just know it's their fault. I'm not saying that everyone is blameless and nobody ever does anything wrong, I'm just saying you can't generalize and come up with this nebulous them and turn it into some sort of sacrificial lamb. I'm also saying that what is defined as man and what is defined as woman have everything to do with each other. You can't weaken the bias against your own sex by strengthening the bias against the other as would happen in the course of turning them into demon them. On the contrary, this is ultimately self-defeating as it is also reinforcing the very bias you try to fight. Like I explained in my last video, these third wave feminist concepts of gender roles and their rejection is ultimately what gets to the root of the bias seen by all genders. I say all genders very deliberately too. We can see men are stereotyped one way and women stereotyped another. What about the other people without a neat little label to pin on them? Without a way to prejudge, Fear takes over and does the obligatory prejudgment. And it doesn't get any worse than that. So that's why I say all genders and sexes, in whatever combination for that matter. So that's what feminism does. Now, what about these men's issues? We know it has a common source, but they can be of use in another way, too. A feminist wants to break these stereotypes. A men's rights issue may highlight just where these stereotypes still have a very strong hold. Even a feminist may find herself accepting whatever idea it is until she notices it's rooted in this antiquated idea of female inferiority. Without that female inferiority, there can be no male superiority, and thereby no need for a handicap, so to speak. We then have equalization. So, I certainly don't see feminism and men's rights as being mutually exclusive, providing we are just talking about sex-positive feminism and actual men's issues, and not just resentment at losing one's superior status and conflating it with men's rights. I am a supporter of feminism as well as men's issues. Opposition to circumcision or intactivism is a big one for me. I also don't appreciate the assumptions and stereotypes people will have about me simply because I am a man. It's really annoying. I could say the same thing about assumptions people make when they discover I am an atheist, too. It's kind of part of my sense of fairness, as I don't like seeing it done to other people, either. I'm also very focused on human rights and civil liberties in general. So, this coexistence of feminism and men's rights seems like a normal pairing of philosophies, which are just part of my personal philosophy about freedom and social justice in general. I think I have put forth a good argument showing their opposition to each other is counterproductive and steeped in the irrationality of groupthink. I have also put forth a good argument for their complementary nature when viewed in the light of reason.